In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the internal settings of the Wildlife Acoustics SM4 BAT detector. So here on the screen, you can see what the detector looks like in the different compartments. It's got a front cover for waterproofness, a front screen panel to actually change the settings and the battery compartment. Uh, but uh, let's take a look at the actual detector to see where you can find the on off switch and the SD cards. So here we have our detector uh, and you just have to lift this latch here to open up the front panel. Uh, then you can see the buttons uh, where you can change the settings. But before we do that, we note this indentation here and we have to squeeze the detector there to open up the battery panel. And we insert four D batteries here. Then we can close this and we can actually switch the detector on. So here on the right, the top right side, the switch is set to EXT for external. Since there's no external power source, that means the detector is off. And then we switch it down to INT for internal because the internal power source is there. So that's how we switch the detector on. Okay, so when you switch the detector on, you end up in the main menu. And this is where we're going to change uh, some settings uh, to make sure that it's set up properly to monitor bats in Atlantic Canada. Feel free to pause this video at any time if you are going along uh, with this and have a detector in front of you, because I might be going a little bit fast, but uh, you can pause it. So these buttons here, the enter menu button, if you're already in the menu, it's to go deeper into the menu. So in this case, to go into the quick start menu. Um, and the arrow buttons are for navigation. The up and down is for navigating down into other sections of this menu. And right and left is to go deeper into the menu. So first we're gonna go to quick start. So you can either click enter or you can click the right button. And then you're in quick start. Here we want to go down once and then select record minus 30 set to plus 30 rise. So this is suitable for, um, for stationary uh, monitoring because we do want the detectors to start before sunset, just 30 minutes before sunset, record all through the night and switch off automatically 30 minutes after sunrise. If you're doing um, mobile uh, acoustic monitoring, you could set it to record always, but because this is always done after sunset and before sunrise, uh, this option here is fine as well. And you can see here the blinking rectangle. Uh, that's where that's the indicator of where you are uh, and what you have selected. So once we have selected what we want, we can either click the right button or the enter button to confirm. Here it asks us if we want to override it. So we go down to yes and we click again, either right or enter. Now we don't, it's, it's asking us if we want to start recording yet. Well, we have other things to set. So we just click the left arrow to go back to the quick start menu, click left again to go to the main menu, and then we go to settings. So here in settings, we start by changing the audio settings. Um, I'm not going to go into detail what all of these settings mean, but these are the right kind of settings that work for recording bets in Atlantic Canada. So click enter or right button to go into audio settings. And now we're just gonna, some of these settings are happen to already be correct, which you always wanna check. Uh, and some of them I know are not correct, so we're gonna change them. So gain we want to set to 12 decibels. So that's already set. The 16K high filter we want to set to off. So if it's set to on, then click to the right, uh, then click up or down to switch it off and click to the right again to confirm. Sample rate has to be 256 kilohertz. But so there's more if you go further down. So minimum duration, we actually want to set it to 1.0. So to change that, we're going to click right. Now the marker is on the 0.5 and we can go down until it says 1.0 milliseconds. Then when we're done, we click right, which saves the setting and the marker goes back to the left. So we can go further down now. 
Maximum duration, we want to set to 50 milliseconds. Here it's already 50. It might actually be a lot higher number. Now you can just hold the arrow buttons to more quickly change this to a higher or lower value. So we set it to 50 milliseconds and again confirm by clicking the right button. When we go further down, minimum trigger frequency, we want to set it to 15. It might be set to 16. So if so, change it uh, down to 15. Trigger level, we want to set it to 12 decibels if it's not already there. Trigger window, we want to change that to two seconds. So again, we go to the right so that the marker is on the three. We click down once to set that to two seconds and confirm by clicking to the right one more time. And then you see that marker jumping back to the left there. So we're ready to scroll further down. Maximum length, we want to set it to zero minutes and 15 seconds and compression to none. So all of that is good. So that's all that's in this screen. So we want to go back to the previous layer of the menu. We click left. So we're back in the settings menu. Now we can go down to date and time. So again, I click down and then I click enter to go into date and time. So here, make sure that uh, you check that your date and time are correct. So again, you can change it by just going to the right to January 18. I can change it to 19, 20. It is actually January 18 now, so I'll leave it there. Confirm that your time is correct and just go all the way through to the right until you get to the seconds and confirm once more so that the marker is on the left. Now, it'll also tell you what it thinks is your sunrise and sunset type or time. We haven't set the location yet, so it doesn't actually know that, so you can ignore this for now. So we go to the left, back to the settings menu, and now we go down to location. Enter to go in there. You don't have to worry about prefix. That's just uh, a standard file name that it's going to uh, give to all the files. Um, I like to have it set to the detector number, but you could change it into any word or any numbers that you like. So here in latitude, you're going to have to look up. Uh, what I usually do is here on Prince Edward Island, I just set my latitude and longitude for Charlottetown. That's close enough. So anywhere in Atlantic Canada, um, the nearest city is fine. You can just look up. So you don't have to exactly know yet where you're going to deploy your detector, but you got to be somewhat close. So go to the nearest city. Uh, the important part here is that um, wherever you're deploying your detector and where whatever latitude and longitude you set, that the sunset and sunrise time do not differ by more than half an hour. So usually closest uh, community or, or city is, is easiest to Google. So you look up what the latitude and longitude of your locations are. And again, you go to the right to change this. Make sure that latitude in Atlantic Canada is always set north and that longitude is always set west. Now you do have to go further down here. You have to go to your time zone. And here it matters. Uh, you you got to set the time zone correctly. Um, depending on where you are in Atlantic Canada, because Newfoundland and uh, the south of uh, southeastern Labrador have, are on a different time zone than uh, the maritime provinces. So here what you want to do is uh, if you are in the maritime provinces, um, you want to set the time zone during daylight savings time at minus three UTC. Uh, and here we're only talking about daylight savings time because NA bet is done in the summer months and not in the winter months. However, if you're in uh, Newfoundland and southeastern Labrador and you're on Newfoundland time, uh, you need to set the UTC to minus two and a half during daylight savings time. So you can just do that here by going to two and setting this to three. For now, I'm going to set this back to three for the maritime provinces. Again, confirm by clicking to the right and then to the left to go back into the menu. So down once more, and you have sunrise and sunset type. Just make sure that that's set to solar sunrise and sunset. Now, again, it tells you what it believes the sunrise and sunset times are. And now, because you've set your time and your location and your date, uh, you can check uh, by using the internet to see if this is correct for the area that you're at.
We're not going to worry about delay start, but I do want to go down to LED indicator and show that to you. Um, this could be set to five minutes only or to always. And that means that once we start the detector, this, if it's set to always, this little light here will blink throughout the night. If you are, uh, if you've got your detector deployed for stationary surveys, you might want to set this to five minutes only, uh, just to draw less attention because otherwise it's blinking throughout the night and uh, people will be able to easily find the detector. If you're doing a mobile driving transects, you might want to set it to always because it gives you just a bit of a confirmation that the detector is still going and the detector is in your lap. There's no risk of people finding it and, and uh, stealing it or something. We don't worry about advanced, so we just go back to the left. Now we can go into schedule and edit schedule. You don't have to change anything here because in quick settings, we already set this up to start 30 minutes before sunset and go till 30 minutes after sunrise. This is just to confirm. Or if you want to change it, you can, but we recommend leaving it like this. So we go back to the left, back to the left again. Now we go down further into utilities menu. There's a, most of this we're going to ignore in this video, but I just want to scroll down. This is where you can calibrate your microphone. So this is where you use the Wildlife Acoustics uh, microphone calibrator. Uh, and this is where you check whether your microphone is still sensitive enough. If it isn't sensitive enough, you can't use it. it uh, you'll have to replace it or you'll have to repair it. Uh, so it is important to check this uh, before you deploy your equipment. So as you see, um, there there's, might be some sound coming into the microphone. That's why this number is changing. But this number is currently at uh, about minus at about minus sixty five, minus seventy uh, decibel. Uh, so when you use the acoustic calibrator and you put the microphone in the right position and you switch it on, this number will become should become less negative, so closer to zero. Right now, uh, with the calibrator on the microphone sensitivity reads minus 27. So it's important that this number needs to be um, less negative than minus 47. Uh, so if it's more negative than minus 47, so minus 50, minus 60, minus 70, your microphone isn't sensitive enough. But is it, if it's between minus 47 and uh, closer to zero, in this case minus 27, your microphone sensitivity is sufficient and you can use it. Now as for how to use the calibrator, um, you'll have to set the calibrator here, the right switch to calibrate uh, and the left switch to on. Then you take your microphone and you basically put the, the bottom end, the flat end, on the calibrator uh, and slide it all the way until the front side of the microphone touches these two switches. And now you're good to read the value on uh, your SM4. If you go down more, you can format your SD cards. So here in this in the slot here on the side, this is where I inserted my SD card and you just do that by pressing it in. So before you start monitoring, you want to make sure that your SD card is empty. Um, so you're just going to say enter, format all SD cards, you're going to go to yes, and you're going to hit enter and let it do its thing. So now it's formatting the card. You don't want to do this when you pick up your detector, because if you do that, you will lose all your data. So that's all that we need to worry about here. So we're going to go, we can go to the left again, main menu. Um, so now you can hit the check status button. This is just, this gives you an overall view of uh, some of the, the main settings, some of the important settings. So you can check your date and your time, make sure those are correct. You can see microphone U2. If it doesn't say U2, then your microphone's probably not connected. Um, this menu, this keeps going back to the main menu. So you can just click check status to see that screen again. You can confirm that your SD card is indeed in there. That's a, it's about a 31 
uh, gigabyte card and there's currently less than one gigabyte of data on there. So it'll say zero. Uh, and you can see that the battery voltage here, uh, you if you have fresh batteries in there, it needs to be six or higher. So these are not fresh batteries. And then you are ready to deploy your detector. So until that time, you can switch your detector off. Now you bring your detector into the field with you. So once it's deployed in the field, which we explain uh, during our workshop, you can switch it on again, let it cycle through its screens until it goes to the main menu. And then the last thing you want to do is hit check status one more time because you've moved your detector around. You want to make sure that uh, everything is still fine. So check that the date and time are correct, that your microphone is connected, that the SD card is still saying, yep, there's an SD card in there, and that your battery voltage is uh, six or higher. And then you're ready to start recording. So now the very last thing you do is hit schedule start. Now, if you do this during the day, which you should before uh, the, the monitoring time, the detector will just say uh, going to sleep now uh, because it's going to go into a sleep mode and it won't wake up until 30 minutes before uh, sunset. But if you're doing your driving transect and you hit schedule start, which is after sunset, it's going, just going to say preparing to record. And now it's getting ready to record and you'll know it's ready by this light blinking. If it's red, it means it's just ready. It's not doing anything. And if it blinks green, it means that it actually picked something up uh, and it's, it's currently recording and you can see it says that there. So this is very handy during your driving transect, your mobile driving transect, that you know that the detector is actually active. Now, if you're done with your mobile driving, uh, driving transect, or uh, you're picking up a detector from a stationary transect, it's, it's very important, especially during the driving transect, to hit the schedule stop button. If you don't hit schedule stop and you just switch your detector off while it's actually writing a file or recording to the SD card, you might actually corrupt your data. So very important to say schedule stop, make sure that it gets back to this main menu. You can now hit the check status button once again if you want to see, oh, how much, was, uh, how much were my batteries drained? Uh, is there more than one gigabyte of data on there? You can check a couple of things. Also make sure that your battery power was still going. If it's a stationary monitoring, um, just hitting that stop and check status just confirms if the screen comes on, your batteries were still good. Otherwise, you may need to troubleshoot. Um, but again, after doing your driving transect, when you're done, you have to click schedule stop before and then go back into the main menu before you switch the switch back to external off. And now you're ready to take your data, put it in the computer and see if you recorded any bets. I hope that was helpful. <laughs>